Hi. Wow. Some of you really are fervent in your beliefs about stacking. A few days ago, an imposter published a video about how stacking doesn't increase signal. And boy oh boy, did you let me have it. Then, another imposter published a video about how stacking does increase signal. And boy oh boy, did you let me have it again. So which is right? Well, they both are. And I'm not just committing the middle ground fallacy here. Both are scientifically valid ways of thinking about stacking. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. So what is the crux of the problem? Is it the definition of signal that is creating the issues? Not really. That was a red herring in both videos. The real issue is what we define as noise. I will explain both strategies and why they are both valid. I'll start with the stacking decreases noise method first, and then the stacking increases signal. First, we have to talk about slingshots. Well, we have to use an analogy of slingshots. Let's say that a slingshot is your deep sky object. Rocks are the photons. The slingshot can shoot multiple rocks at a time, but when it slings the photons at you, it doesn't really care about precision. Sometimes it will sling four photons at you, sometimes 10, sometimes 15. Slingshots can't count after all. I'm going to give you a task. I want you to figure out how many photons the slingshot is firing at you per second. I'm going to give you a one pixel camera to make it easier. The camera measures photons perfectly and has no read noise. Also, we're in space, so there's no light pollution. Your task is going to take one second exposures until you know how many photons hit the sensor per second on average. Sound good? Awesome. As you measure the photons, I want you to create a histogram too. A histogram is just a graph that tells you how often you're getting different values. You take the first one second exposure and see that 10 photons hit the sensor. So you make a little square at 10 with a height of 1. The next measurement is also 1, then 5, and 6, and so on. After about 20 measurements, your graph looks like this. The shape of the histogram is a Poisson distribution. Okay, I'm going to do you a favor. I've already got the true distribution with almost infinite observations of our slingshot. It's still a Poisson distribution. Look at that. You're welcome. Based on the histogram alone, how many photons per second on average is the deep sky object emitting? Well, the histogram peaks at about 10 or 11, so a reasonable guess would be 10.5. But don't worry, I've done you another favor. I calculated the average, and it is exactly 10.562. Nice. So every second, the, the deep sky object is emitting 10.562 photons on average. That's exactly the same as 10,562 photons every 1,000 seconds, on average. But look here, there's variation. The signal is not constant, it's noisy. This noise can be measured using a statistic called standard deviation. Some people call it sigma, but that's just all Greek to me. <gasps> so I'm going to call it the standard deviation. The standard deviation of a Poisson distribution is just the square root of the average signal. That's pretty easy. So the square root of 10.562 is about 3.25. The standard deviation pretty much tells us how noisy our measurement is. All right, now I've done you a couple of favors. Now do a favor for me. Pretend like you didn't see the true histogram for a second. I want you to take four one second subframes of our slingshot nebula again. Good. Now average them together. Good. Let's put this new average in a new histogram. Now repeat this process 100 times. I'll wait. Wow, you're really good at this imaging thing. I like you. Okay, let's look at this new histogram. Look at the mean. The mean is 15.4. That is actually pretty close to the real average. Remember, you're pretending you don't know the real average. But look at the noise. The standard deviation went down from 3.25 to 1.6. We've cut the noise in half. Okay, but what does that even mean though? Well, think about it this way. 
If you took just a single one second subframe and got a value of 10, your confidence that the true average photons per second would be kind of low. You could reasonably expect the true mean or the true average to be four photons a second or 17 photons a second. But if you took four subframes, got an average of 10, now you can reasonably expect the true average to be between six and 14. You've gained precision in your estimate. With this amount of precision, we can take two one second subframes and multiply the result by two. More often than not, the result would give us a better estimate of how many photons hit the sensor every two seconds than if we just took a single two second subframe and used that measurement by itself. This process would work for a three second subframe as well, but it wouldn't work for a four second subframe. In that case, we'd have equal precision. The expected error in measurement of multiplying the average of four subframes is the same as the expected error of taking a single four second sub. Pretty cool, huh? Keep in mind that in real life, we don't know what the mean of the raw distribution is. So if we only stack four subs, the confidence in our estimate isn't good enough to reliably predict how many photons would hit the sensor every five seconds. Let's do the same thing, but this time with 16 subframes. We'll take 16 subs, average them, and put them in the histogram. We'll keep repeating this process until the histogram fills up. Look at the spread of the data now. The noise has dropped considerably from just taking four subframes. The average is 10.564, which is awfully close to our true value of 10.562. The standard deviation is 0.81. Again, this just means that if we took 16 one second subframes, the resulting average from the 16 subs could reasonably be between 9 and 12. We've reduced the noise even further. So what are we doing? In statistics, this would be called taking a sampling distribution. A sampling distribution is just a histogram of averages from a raw distribution. In our case, the raw histogram is the original Poisson distribution. The standard deviation of the new sampling distribution is the standard deviation of the original raw distribution divided by the square root of the number of samples we've used. In our case, a subframe is one sample. Four subframes is four samples. 16 subframes is 16 samples. When we stack, the number of samples determines the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. It is the noise. Under this scenario, the noise decreases quite quickly at first and then flattens out, but it should always decrease as we add more subframes. The average we are computing remains constant. To figure out the signal to noise ratio then, all we have to do is divide the average that we are calculating by the noise. The numerator is just the average brightness of the pixel per second, and the denominator is the square root of the average brightness divided by the square root of the number of subframes. When you divide a square root by another square root, you can move both the numerator and the denominator underneath the square root. Yay for math! So the resulting equation is the average brightness of the pixel divided by the square root of 1 over n times the brightness. Nice! You can do this for each pixel and get accurate measurements for each pixel. Stretching then allows you to see the small differences between the different pixels. This works. It is valid. It is good. This is literally what an average stacking algorithm does. And most of us do some sort of average stacking when a deep sky object is our target. There's another way to think about it though, and some of you in the previous explanation were probably ready to yell at me in the comments about calling the signal the noise. I know. It's okay. I still hope you're my friend. Let's take a look at the Poisson distribution again. Instead of thinking about the spread of the distribution as noise, some of you may be saying, none of that is really noise, it's all signal. If I take a one second subframe and measure 10 photons, the 10 photons are the signal for that subframe. If I take another subframe and measure five photons, that's also the signal. If we stack those, we can just add the two signals together. Yes, this is also a perfectly valid way of thinking about it. There is a drawback though. It's that the noise never decreases. Let me explain. 
Let's say that we want to stack 1001 second subframes together. To make things simple, let's just say the signal is 1000 times the average of our raw Poisson distribution. Our total signal would be around 10,564. Sounds pretty good, right? But each time we add a subframe to another subframe, we are adding error into the measurement. The amount of error in each sub's measurement is determined by the original Poisson distribution of the one second subframe. All of those errors add up. In fact, for each sub you add, you also have to add another standard deviation of error. The error is never going to go down. But that's okay. The error adds up based on a square root, but the signal adds up linearly. So the signal increases faster than the noise. Whew. So we can make a signal to noise ratio equation out of this, which is signal to noise ratio equals the signal times the number of subframes all divided by the square root of the number of subframes times the signal. Nice. This is probably the explanation that most of you have heard in astrophotography. It's easy and simple to understand. Okay, we've got two equations. One assumes that the spread of the Poisson distribution is noise, and the other assumes that it is just part of the signal. Which one is correct? Look closely. Do you see any differences between them? Well, there's not a lick of difference between them. How, you might ask? Well, let's simplify the decreasing noise equation. We can start by making it a bit more complicated. If two numbers are multiplied un underneath a square root, then that is equivalent to the square root of one of them times the square root of the other. We can then take the square root of one over n and move it to the numerator of the equation. So on top we have the average signal times the square root of n. The average signal is equal to the square root of the average signal times the square root of the average signal. So one of those square roots cancels out the square root on the bottom. The final signal to noise ratio equation is just the square root of the average signal times the number of subframes. Remember, this is the SNR equation, not the signal equation. Let's get to the increasing signal equation now. Let's start by separating the denominator again into the square root of n times the square root of the average signal. In the numerator, n is equal to the square root of n times the square root of n. And the average signal is equal to the square root of the average signal times the square root of the average signal. The denominator cancels out completely. And the final S and R equation is the square root of the average signal times the number of subframes. Remember, this is the S and R equation, not the signal equation. So which method is the real answer? Well, they both are. I know it's unsatisfying, but it's true. You might be saying, Mark, come on. One of them has to be the scientifically correct one. Nope, I'm not opening that can of worms. But I will say this. In real life, two one second subframes are not exactly equal to a single two second subframe. Why? Because the explanation given here simplifies things. The camera measures photons perfectly and has no read noise. Also, we're in space, so there's no light pollution. Two one second subframes can approximate a two second subframe pretty well. Also, there are benefits to thinking about stacking as averaging signal. In other words, it often helps to think about the spread of the Poisson distribution as noise and not part of the signal. You'll often see advice to use an averaging algorithm when stacking. Why is that? Well, because we expect the incoming light to reach the sensor based on a Poisson distribution by estimating the average of the Poisson distribution as a signal and treating the variation as the noise. You can start rejecting pixel values that are too noisy. For example, if a satellite photobombs a subframe, the pixels affected will have huge brightness values much greater than what the noise would predict. The algorithm can then reject the offending pixel and not have it ruin your stack. That's why stacking multiple frames doesn't increase the brightness of the stacked image when using an averaging algorithm. So yeah, both imposters were right. The first imposter was not crazy like the second one claimed, but the second one sure was an asshole. Thanks for watching.